Man and woman are to leave, cleave, and weave. Leave their parents' home, cleave together like glue, and weave the fabric of a new life together. Often, when you buy a toy, some furniture, or um, even a cookout grill, you'll find these words, some assembly required. This means as soon as the item arrives in your home, it's not quite ready to use. Likewise, when a man and woman decide to establish, expand, and extend a home, there's some assembly required. Yahweh's blueprint as seen through Adam and Eve is a man and a woman enter a covenant of companionship we call marriage. Why? Why use them as an example? Well, Matthew 19, 4, verses 5, 4 and 5 read, haven't you read? He, Yeshua speaking, replied that he who created them in the beginning made them male and female. And he also said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two will become one flesh. In this new relationship, the man and woman are to leave, cleave, and weave. Leave their parents' home, cleave together like glue, and weave the fabric of a new life together. You see, this is the beginning of a new house or legacy, if you will. Kind of like the house of Judah or house of Israel, which are mentioned in Jeremiah 3, verse 18, or the house of David mentioned in 1 Samuel 20, verse 16. Then Yahweh brings through this union one or more children. And in order for this new house to function as Yahweh intends, that is for all parts to work together, there's some assembly required. I need to also mention, there's an increasing number of men and women who operate outside Yahweh's blueprint. Yeah, they uh, establish a house by having one or more children before entering a covenant of companionship. Sometimes they look like a married couple, and sometimes they don't. Now, all is not lost, but it may require additional parts to complete the assembly. In either case, it's the establishing of the man and woman becoming husband and wife that they don't let the crazy in their home. What do I mean by the crazy? The crazy is to allow the devil to have a dominant influence in your home, which detours, disrupts, or disintegrates your following Yahweh's kingdom blueprint for the family. You don't want the crazy in your house. Yahweh's general order of the family is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, and Ephesians 6, verse 1. And they read, but there is one thing I want you to know. The head of every man is Christ. The head of woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Ephesians 6, and the husband and wife are head over the children. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Please, don't think of this as a harsh hierarchy, but the relational order of humanity that Yahweh has put in place. Sadly, oh, wait a minute, I think I lost something. Ah, yeah. Sadly, we have more and more men and women who are not following Yahweh's blueprint. And we're seeing the results of that in so many different ways. We have children on paternity court wondering, who's my daddy? We don't know. Mother takes a man to the courtroom to find out through DNA if this is their child's, um, uh, this is their child's parent. And, or father in many cases. And there was one where this woman had two men in the courtroom, actually three, and none of them were the child's parent. Can you imagine what that child has first gone through all their life? And now when they find out that not these, none of these three 
are related to them either. That is just setting them up for trauma and for allowing the crazy through the devil to enter their life and really screw up their thinking, separating it from the way God wants them to think. Yeah, we, we, oh man, we really, really, really have to work to keep the crazy out of it. And we'll talk about that. A man by the name of H.G. Wells wrote a book called War of the Worlds. It's a science fiction novel, basically about Martians invading the earth. The issue is when the Martians come, who's going to win the battle for planet earth? My question is, in application, when the devil comes to invade your home, the issue is who will rule? When a man and woman decide to come together, this is where Satan tries to sow his strategic seeds of sabotage to this union and its legacy, that is the children that will come out of it. If he can get this couple to start outside Yahweh's kingdom blueprint, he's won the first round in the fight for their legacy. If 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 he can get you to establish a household outside of Yahweh's plan, he knows you'll be starting on a sandy foundation and not a solid foundation. Each member of that couple who chooses to couple together come from separate households, which I'll call countries for our next part of our series. This is true of all couples, regardless of how they begin. But please, if you meet someone and there's any chance you two might become a couple, there are seven things you need to know to stop the crazy, or at least help keep it out uh, from, from running amok in your life. And I'm talking about if you see someone and you're at a party and, hey, let's drink and then go home together. Before you do that, which you shouldn't do, but before you do that, there are seven things you need to know. If not, you might be putting an anchor around your neck and those of your children in the future. For these truths that we're going to talk about to be effective in your life, you must be willing to respond to Paul's urgent request that we find in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. There must be a transformation and a reformation to result in a determination to live according to Yahweh's plan. You have to want to do that. But you know what? I need to pause for just a moment and say something about the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God, perfection doesn't mean to be flawlessly perfect. Perfection means to be mature, to grow. A lot of people are, are, will come into a situation, I am waiting for God's will. I'm waiting for him to reveal his will to me. I want him to tell me what to do. Now, let me ask you something, especially for those who are parents. Can you imagine this? You have a child, they're three days old, and you know, you're wondering, they're crying. Are you hungry? Do I need to feed you? Have you soiled yourself? Do I need to clean and change you? Now imagine you have a 12-year-old and they're crying about something. Now, are you going to ask them, do I need to feed you? Have you soiled yourself? Do I need to change your clothes? Or let's just say they're 17 years old. They've got a problem. Um, there's a point at which me asking them what's going on is appropriate because we're learning how to communicate. But there comes a point in time when there's a maturity. And if there is an issue, they would tell me rather than me asking them. What am I saying by all this? I'm saying Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is really how we as believers need to, to live our lives. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Yahweh does not move generally. He does not move parked cars. Once you start moving, there's a verse that says something about whatever your, your hand finds to do it, you know, do that. 
I'm going to give you a challenge. Look through scripture and find out how many times a person asked Yahweh what to do, and then he told them. And then I'm going to say, to put that in two separate categories. Were they in an intense situation where they needed immediate guidance and direction? Or was it just they were just wondering, gee, I want to get married one day, and I'm looking for someone to marry? Although the Bible does say he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And in Proverbs 31, it says, a, a, a woman of great value, a virtuous woman who can find, somebody's looking and somebody is prepared to be found. Many things in life are like that. Well, I don't know. Should I take this job or take that job? Should I buy this car or buy that car? Move in the direction based on what you understand and know about God and his word and the resources he made available to you, whether it's financial or people or what have you, and then make your decision and trust him to direct your path. That's walking by faith. If he tells us everything we need to do, that really won't require any faith because he's telling us and holding our hand along the way. Enough of that. Let me continue on. When it comes to establishing a household, whether it happens intentionally, as he has purposed, or inadvertently, which he has in many cases uh, permitted, it's urgently important to understand the seven things you need to know to help stop crazy, or that is crazy thinking. If you find someone you might have an interest in, it's extremely important you learn at least seven things about them. If not, there's no need to complain about the role you give them in your life. The fewer of these seven things you know, the higher the risk you have of Satan disrupting and destroying your life together. The first thing is this. You need to know what is their identification. That is, what is their official name, their government name? You know, Buttercup, Pookie, Little Ray Ray, that's probably not on their driver's license. Oh, yeah. And in getting to know their name, that means first and last name. You need to know who they are as you get to know who they are. The second thing you need to know is their location. Where are they from? What is their country, state, city, neighborhood of origin? It'd really be a devastating thing to have your family broken up because someone got deported after 10 or 20 years of you all living together. Identification and location. The third thing is their population. That is, what size family do they come from? Why do I need to know all of this? Well, because the dynamics of an only child and those from a multi-sibling family are distinctively different, especially in uh, household volume levels. The fourth thing you want to know is their communication style. Just because you may use the same words, they might not have the same meaning. For example, the English word boot, B-O-O-T, often refers to footwear for us. However, in England, the boot refers to the trunk of a car. And right next door to the U.S. in Canada, a boot refers to an adult who buys alcohol for underage people. You need to know what they mean by what they say, or there'll be a lot of misunderstandings. Another way of saying a lot of arguments about things because things just weren't clearly understood by one or the other person. The fifth thing you need to know is their designation. Right. We've taken a look at their identification, their location, their population, and their communication. And now we're at their designation. That is, what flag best represents their household? Now, I want to introduce you to the four countries that we're going to talk about starting next week. And we want to find out what kind of flag they're waving. Here are the four possibilities. The first is the country of control. The second, the second one is fun country. The third is the perfect country. 
And the fourth one is the country of peace. As I said, we'll look more into them next time, so you won't want to miss that. The sixth thing you need to know is their governmental style. Was their home run like an um, autocracy? That is, where one person established and enforced the law of the house? Or perhaps um, more like a democracy where there was um, um, majority rule. You know, we vote in our house. Some of us, that would be a very foreign thing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe possibly the um, something called an oligarchy. That is where a few people rule the majority. Just imagine if one house had a single ruler and the other one was everyone has a say, oh, they're going to be fireworks, to say the least. It's important to know how their house was governed. And the seventh thing you need to know is what is their capital style? That is, who, or who had the seat of power in their home? Was it dad? Was it mom? Or, oh my gosh, was it the children? As sad to say, it is in some cases. How or why is this relevant to family matters? Well, remember, the crazy or the crazy way of thinking is to allow the devil to have a dominant influence in your home, which detours, disrupts, or disintegrates your following Yahweh's kingdom blueprint for the family. Yahweh's purpose principles and plans rule regardless of family structure. And that is because they're designed so that we learn how to love him and our neighbor. So regardless of what family country you come from, the principles are to be practiced by people in each one of them so they can get along. That's one reason why I'll mention this, why people are looking for this soulmate that's actually a Greek concept that is not found in the Bible at all. Whomever you choose to marry, if they're willing and you're willing to follow Yahweh's blueprint, his instructions and directions for life, you will be fine. People are thinking they have to be a special person. And the problem with that, I'm going to talk more about this a little later on, but I want to introduce it here the problem with thinking that uh, there's just this one person and they were sent from heaven just for you is that then one day you may see someone else and wonder, oh my goodness, did I feel a little tingle or an attraction to that person? Oh, I shouldn't feel that. If you're a man, you're going to feel that. If you're a woman, you might think that also. The issue is not getting rid of the tingle. The issue is, if you've made a, a covenant of companionship commitment, then you just say, no. Feelings are feelings, and they're there for a reason, and they don't go away just because we've made certain commitments. The feelings may still show up at strange times, but we are supposed to know what God says to do in those circumstances, and sometimes you say no to your feelings. Don't live by your feelings live by faith in the instructions and directions that Yahweh gives us. When we follow those plans as he has laid them out, we show that we love him and our neighbor. We demonstrate our love for Yahweh and our neighbor when we practice his principles, which include his instructions, according to his plan, which is his way, and fulfilling his purpose, which is the outcome he intends. I want to say this about reading the Bible. We need to understand the different sections that we read so that if there's a promise, we know there's a promise. Sometimes there's just a wisdom that is given. For example, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go or appropriate to him. And when they're older, they won't. Um, and when he's old, They'll, they won't, uh, they'll turn back, they'll turn their way back. Well, that's really not a promise. That is wisdom. 
because there are some people I know they have done all they could to help their child learn the instructions and, and the um, wisdom and direction of Yahweh. They've sought to bring them up in the nurturing and, and his admonition. And for some of them, they've made a left turn where they should have made a right. Now, in many cases, they return, but sometimes it may be months or years later. Well, what am I saying? I'm saying that's not a promise, but it's a, a reasonable expectation based on what wisdom has shown in the Bible. I know, I know. A lot of times we try and grab things. That it's a promise to me. If Yahweh mentions that specifically to you, then that's specifically to you. But in general, that's not a promise to everyone, but it's a pattern that we should expect unless something else interrupts that. Now, back to following Yahweh, he wants us to do more than just obey him when we follow his instructions and directions. You see, obedience is just compliance uh, with an order or submission to another's um, authority. Sadly, many people just want to know the rules only so they know how uh, so they know how much they don't have to change. Well, he said this, so I'm doing this, but if I don't do it there, I can keep on doing this the way I want to do it. That's not what he's looking for. Yahweh is looking for people to worship him. He is looking for those who are willing to trust him enough to exchange their way of living for his. That's worship. John 4, 23 reads, the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way. Worship isn't closing your eyes, folding your hands, and tears running down your face. Worship means to bow down in reverence, to give your service and your strength to another. And that's what it really means. Now, with this frame of reference, I want to bring our time today to a close and we're going to pick up next time talking about what country are you from? What I kind of introduced a little bit ago. We've looked at some assembly required. Stop the crazy, the crazy thinking. In order to prepare the next generation, it's urgently important we find out where we are in Yahweh's kingdom blueprint for the family and make the adjustments we can. Your children, your children's children, and their children are depending on the decision that you make. Our desire at Toshia Life Ministries is you get the sound wisdom you need for a successful walk. Shalom.